Today's video is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Hey, brother! Jay, there is no doubt that I have been having a blast going through each episode of WandaVision over the past five weeks. And not only am I looking forward to each new installment, but it's even making me that much more excited about the upcoming Falcon and the Winter Soldier show coming in March. And with this past weekend Super Bowl commercial, we have been given a much clearer glimpse of what we might expect from this show, and I'm starting to get really excited about it, but possibly for the first time. Like, for me personally, I wasn't that in love with the idea of Sam taking over for Cap at the end of Endgame, and it wasn't anything specific against Sam at all, it just, he's kind of a character that I don't feel like has been given that much development. Like, it was kind of like he met Steve on a run one day, and Steve thought that he was a nice guy, and then the next thing we knew, he was part of the Avengers. And then the next thing, the next thing we knew is that he's the new Captain America. Like, that's one of the most iconic roles in the current timeline, period. And I mean, just tell me, like, Am I alone here? Because I don't know how this is going to work. Like, surely it takes more than just merely holding the shield to be Captain America, right? Also, on that note, where did this new shield even come from? Is it going to grant Sam some kind of powers that have hitherto lain dormant? Did I just say hitherto? Is it a magic shield that like Thor's hammer, Sam will have to like become worthy to have the powers of? <laughs> no, that would be ridiculous. Or would it? Guys, before we dive on in, we need to give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, ExpressVPN. Listen, when you go to the bathroom, you close the door, right? Right? Like you don't want some passerby just looking in on you, so why do you let other people look in on what you're doing online? Because going on the internet without ExpressVPN is like going to the bathroom with the door open. Bathroom analogies always make more sense, don't they? Here's the thing though, your internet service provider knows every single thing and everywhere you visit online. Like, did you look up the spelling for fiduciary the other day and then all of a sudden get a whole bunch of advertisements for dictionaries? Because me neither. Because that's the thing, the places you go is data that can be sold to advertisers and then used to promote items to you. And ExpressVPN puts a stop to this. They create a secure encrypted tunnel between your device and the internet. It's like carrying a vibranium shield into battle or, Apparently the analogy I thought better fit for a video about shields closing the bathroom door. I use ExpressVPN on all of my devices, whether it be phones, laptops, computers, or even routers. I like how I said phones, laptops, and computers as if all three of those aren't the exact same thing. And the best part is getting set up is super easy. Simply fire up the app, press the one button, and you're protected. So if you're like me and think that looking up words like fiduciary is your own business, then head on over to expressvpn.com scb. Again, use our exclusive link expressvpn.com slash scb for three months free. That's expressvpn.com slash scb. Link is in the description down below. Because I know everyone is wondering, a fiduciary is involving trust, especially with regard to relationship between a trustee and a beneficiary. Now I just need to look up trustee and beneficiary. Okay, so let's recap. Ha, that's funny. Recap. Samuel is the new cap, or at least that's what Steven wants. I guess I suddenly decided that I wanted to be proper and use full names. <laughs> Whatevs, or should I say whatever. As a refresher, during the Battle of, is it the Battle of Earth? I just looked it up. It's literally, that's what it's called, the Battle of Earth. Did you know the battle in Endgame is called the Battle of Earth? Anyway, during the Battle of Earth, apparently, Steven is facing off with Thanos. Sorry, Thanopolis? Thanosius. You know what? I'm gonna not. Steve, just Steve, nay, Cap, finally reaches the limit of his nearly indestructible vibranium shield, which is quite literally broken in half. And then after the battle is won, we see Steve embark on a journey to restore each of the Infinity Stones to its proper place in time and space and reality. Notably, he takes with him the case that holds all of the stones themselves and Mjolnir, but no shield. And yet, despite missing the agreed upon five second limit for traveling through time and space for a very long period of time, he does still arrive back nearby on a bench with a shield just after he went and lived an entire reality with Peggy. And it's here when he hands over the shield and the mantle of Captain America 
to Sam. And while in that moment, Sam does accept the shield, I have a feeling a significant amount of Falcon and the Winter Soldier is going to be revolving around the idea of what this means and what Sam is supposed to do with it. Because those are some really huge shoes to fill and not for nothing, but there are some key differences between Steve and Sam. Like, I don't know, the fact that Steve is quite literally a super soldier with like super strength and an enhanced sense of leadership and goodness. And again, to be fair, like Steve had some of those characteristics just like innately inside of who he was. But if you don't think that leadership is a superpower, then I ask you to revisit this scene. All right, listen up. Until we can close that portal, our priority is containment. Barton, I want you on that roof. Eyes on everything. Call out patterns and strays. Stark, you've got the perimeter. Anything gets more than three blocks out, you turn it back or you turn it to ash. It's called synergy, people. The whole is greater than the sum of its parts. They had to be a team. The point is, it's not like Sam isn't physically fit or anything like that, but to say that Steve couldn't literally run laps around him, well, that's how we met Sam. Don't say it. Don't you say it. left. Come on! That being said, it's certainly not a requirement that you have superpowers to be a member of the Avengers. I mean, take the original six for example. Three of them were just regular people. I think we can all agree that we're just a few days away at the archery range from being Hawkeye. Am I right? Anybody could be Hawkeye. Now, to be fair though, I think you could almost argue that Tony's wealth and intelligence is so extreme that it kind of verges on just being magic. But nonetheless, Tony, Natasha, and Clint are all just highly skilled humans, which is basically where Sam is. And to be fair, it hasn't really slowed him down that much. I mean, after all, he was at the battle of Earth. On your left. Oh my gosh, on your left, I just got that. No, I'm kidding, I cried in the theater, but still. Point is, Sam has like more than held his own against a bunch of powerful opponents, like super powered or not. And he's clearly an immensely skilled aerial fighter, but then there's the shield. The tagline for the show, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, is who will wield the shield? Oh, it rhymes. This line alone draws a ton of attention to the shield and who it belongs to and who it should belong to. It kind of suggests that whoever is allowed to have the shield is the true successor to Captain America. And just straight up, I am extremely certain that it is going to change hands a lot. Obviously, Sam is going to be the one to start with it, but even just from the trailers, it looks like he's gonna have some trouble mastering it. The other obvious candidate would be the show's other headliner, one Buckingham Barnes, who we've seen hold the shield before and is capable of like cap level blows and throws at least with the one arm. And we literally see him like holding it in the trailer, so. And I can already very much see a situation where Sam is already trying and failing to live up to the standards of Steve Rogers, Captain America, only to also see Steve's other best friend like easily wield the shield with success and then be all but certain that Steve made the wrong choice in entrusting it to him. And of course, it's not a mistake, but I can see this criticism not only coming, you know, internally from Sam, but also maybe externally from the world at large as well. Like maybe the citizens of the MC universe kind of having this feeling of like, this cap isn't quite the same, is he? Do we really think he's worthy of that shield? And you wanna know what I think is gonna make matters like way, way worse? This guy. This guy who is creatively named USA Gent. Based purely on looks alone is kind of the second coming of Steve Rogers. I mean, look, they're even honoring him at a football game. Oh, you were in a commercial at the Super Bowl, Falcon? Well, I am being honored at a high school football game in real life. No, but the point is he looks the part and we can already even see him holding the shield right here on the poster. And while he may be what the public and possibly even Sam feels like is the proper successor to Cap himself, rest assured by the end of this show, that dude is gonna be the villain. Maybe even just by the beginning of the show. In fact, it wouldn't surprise me at all if part of Sam's journey of discovering or embracing the idea of being Cap has nothing at all to do with even wielding the shield. I would even go so far as to say that he is going to defeat someone else who is holding the shield in that process. But before that, Sam himself is going to be struggling with the idea of whether or not he thinks he deserves this mantle. 
It's going to be a quest of overcoming self-doubt and achieving a new level of self-actualization. Finally, seeing himself the way that Steve saw him and understanding that Steve didn't pick him for his power or fighting ability. And most importantly, he didn't pick Sam to be Steve. He picked Sam because of who he already is. Who will wield the shield? It doesn't matter, it's just a symbol. Except it's also a super powerful tool and I'm fairly certain Sam's gonna end up using it. Which is where things get interesting because it's not the shield that makes the man but it's also not gonna hurt. Like Thor learns in Ragnarok, like he doesn't need the hammer to have the powers of Thor, but also he's not going to turn it down if it's available. And I honestly think that Sam's shield might be a little bit more like Mjolnir than we even realize. Not in the like, only if you're worthy can you pick it up kind of way, because we already know that's not true. Other people pick it up. But if you are capital W worthy, then it might unlock some new powers. It's a very, he who be worthy to possess this shield will unlock the powers of Captain America type of thing. Or that's our theory anyway. Which brings us back to one of our first questions anyway. Where did the new shield even come from? Again, Cap breaks his and then leaves without it and then returns with a new one. How new? Well, we know he's about to go time hopping through other timelines, so it's possible that he just literally plucks one from one of those timelines and brings it back. Although that would probably mean that he took that shield from a different Captain America, which doesn't feel like a very Captain America thing to do if you ask me. But I don't actually think that's what happened because if you look carefully at Sam's shield, it is very different from any other Cap shield that we've seen before. So it's also possible that he had another shield made by the people of Wakanda before he even left or possibly possibly even while he was out there time hopping. But bear in mind, before the Battle of Wakanda, they quite literally do give him shields and they look nothing like the original Captain America shield. In fact, they didn't even make the original Captain America shield. That was Howard Stark, and part of what made the shield so unique to begin with is because it came from a very limited resource of vibranium. It was all they had left. So even if Steve had access to a different Howard Stark, they still wouldn't have the additional resources to make another vibranium shield. So. Then there's kind of the question, how do we even know the new one's made of vibranium? So consider this, not only is Cap going through all of these other timelines to return all the different Infinity Stones, but he also needs to return Mjolnir, which would mean returning it back to Thor during the time of Thor 2 or Dark World. That Thor would very much already know Cap at that point and would also probably very much notice the fact that Steve is carrying his hammer. And now true, Cap totally could have returned to that timeline, just set the hammer down and let Thor resummon it to his hand however and whenever he chose fit. Let's face it, Thor is the kind of guy to just like leave things sitting places. But I have news for you, I have scrubbed through just about all of Dark World and there is not a single moment where Thor is not with Jane or else by himself and not with his hammer. Meaning that when Thor is summoning his hammer right here in Endgame, he might literally be summoning it out of his own hands. Meaning if Steve puts it right back where it came from, he's putting it right back in Thor's hands. So he's gonna talk to Thor and explain the whole situation, missing shield and all. Guys, let me ask you this question. Why do you think Loki specifically chooses Captain America to transform into when he's trying to convince Thor things? Cause he saw him that day. That's not how time travel works in this universe, but I had to throw that joke in there. Anyway, Thor is pretty busy that day with like dark elves invading and his mom dying. So maybe Cap helps him out of a bind. Either way, you might be like, Ben, where are you going with this? Get there now. I would very much like to go there, please. Exactly, Rocket. Thor has access to a forge that makes super powerful weapons. The kind of weapons that he might only entrust someone who is worthy of wielding Mjolnir. That forge is of course Need of Valir and where they make Stormbreaker and Infinity War. Also the place where Mjolnir was forged and the Infinity Gauntlet. And I'm pretty sure a new shield for Sam. And in case you're having trouble remembering Need of Valir, it's a star that has a bunch of rings around it. I use this as an example. But here's the thing, Cap leaves with the Infinity Stones and Mjolnir, and I genuinely believe that his game plan is to go and have that life that Tony insisted he have. Just hang up the hero life and grow old with Peggy. So then the question of course arises, why would he need a new shield? And I think the answer is, it's for Sam. It's always been for Sam. How does it feel? Like it's someone else's. 
It isn't. What will it be able to do? I'm so glad you asked. I don't know. Maybe he'll have some kind of like psychic link with the shield itself, like he does Red Wing in the comics, and that's what allows him to bring the shield back to himself. Or maybe it'll shoot lightning and give him super strength. Who knows? Probably not lightning, but maybe. But specifically, not until Sam is willing to embrace the role of Sam Wilson and not Steve Rogers. And that is when he becomes worthy. It's like, he has to get to 10 by himself, but if he does, he gets an extra two. And I am here to tell you that 12 out of 10 is pretty good. Guys, for my question of the day, what do you think? Will the shield have powers? Will we go from a Captain America who was a super powered man with a good weapon to a good man with a super powered weapon? Leave your thoughts in the towel section down below. Also guys, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And don't forget that tomorrow morning we are launching the very first episode in video format of Popcorn Culture, our podcast. We're going to give you a quick preview right after this. The Little Colonels have done their best to get us on the page with no success yet. Yet. It, they've had success. It's got up. It's come down. It's good. <laughs> we have, you know what? What we learned was that apparently you need some amount of like, like one accolades. Oh. Right. That was, that was part of it. So... Like one way we could go about that would be like trying to win like a streamy or something. However, as you know, we've also set up other sorts of um, shenanigans where we're trying to sway the vote of a local magazine to name us the best unnamed thing in Roanoke. Well, I mean, I think we've city. earned it. I think we have earned it. And that's one step. Anyway, that's not the point I'm trying to make here. I'm trying to say is that we know the little colonels are, are, are good at updating Wikipedia to reflect what it should say. Yeah, of course. I'm just saying that if somewhere on Wikipedia it describes jellyfish as a smack of jellyfish, maybe we should update the vernacular to say a current of jellyfish. You know what I mean? I see what you're you saying. You see what I'm saying?